This is a Technicom podcast. You rely on software every day. Maybe you haven't thought about it, but it's true. Regardless of who you are or what you do, chances are that you are benefiting in some way from embedded code which works in the background. Right now, for example, as you are listening to me, there is software working for you. Hello, I'm Peter Ballant from Technicon, and today we look at the world of software development. This field is becoming increasingly complex and the development process remains expensive and many times ununified. At a time where the need for software is exploding in the advent of the Internet of Things, something needs to change. The partners in the Decoder project know this. They are building an integrated development environment as an open source solution. This environment will help to level out the inconsistencies in the development process and provide state-of-the-art tools to ensure that software developed in the EU becomes reusable, efficient, and adaptable. Today we sit down with Olivier Buzero from OW2. OW2 is a valuable partner in Decoder because they promote open source solutions for real world business and industrial environments. Let's go into the studio. Welcome to the podcast and thanks for coming on today. Thank you. We talked a bit about Decoder in the intro, but what can you tell us? Sure. Decoder is an open uh, research and innovation project. Uh, it received the fundings from uh, the European Union's H2020 program, Horizon 2020. And the activities in the project are uh, involving uh, seven organizations uh, from uh, four European countries, one university in Spain, UPV, one research, research center, CEA List in France, two industrial partners, Capgemini, TS, and Cisco, and three SMEs, W2, Technicon, and three technologies. Decoder is building a software project intelligence platform to shorten the learning curve of all new software contributors. They could be programmers, testers, maintainers, or operators. It is using, in fact, the internally NLP and machine learning AI techniques to improve software understanding and uh, to accelerate, uh, to speed up uh, updates while the software code is being considered as a natural language, which is an original approach. And along with existing software quality and security tools, the decoder platform uh, is able to share knowledge within uh, DevOps teams, for instance, and for that it can be aligned with uh, agile programmation, agile development, and CI-CD pipelines. And you, of course, are working for OW2, which is an organization promoting open source software. Tell us the role of OW2 in Decoder. Sure. OW2 is an independent community dedicated to promoting open source software for information systems and to fostering their business ecosystems. Presently, OW2 federates 50, uh, more than 50 organizations and more than 2,500 IT professionals worldwide. We are hosting uh, more than 50 technology projects, including uh, BlueMind, Knowledge, Lutes, OCS Inventory, Rocket Chat, XWiki, for instance. And in order to uh, test the decoder platform, OW2 applies the technologies developed by the project partners to a selection of Java code from uh, the OW2 code base. So we are also the dissemination partner in Decoder. OW2 provides the collaborative infrastructure to all participants in the project. And we also um, represent the project on online through the website and social media during webinars and whenever possible, uh, physically at industry trade, show, trade shows and scientific conferences. So the trade show business is slowly coming back, but social media, meanwhile, is exploding. And as dissemination partner, you must ensure that communication about the project is effective and directed towards the right audience. Correct. We are planning uh, several events, uh, even uh, hybrid uh, events with uh, partly online and, and physically uh, 
in uh, conference rooms. Yes. And let's go back to the overarching goal of Decoder, which is to make software development more streamlined, more efficient, and more resilient to fluctuations in the users and environments. Simply put, Decoder aims to make sure that developers are on the same page. And this has quite a value for a new or temporary developer. Is that about right? That's right. In fact, the, the, the central component in Decoder is a um, database, a knowledge base, which is called the PKM for Persistent Knowledge Manager. And we are uh, collecting knowledge about the software code of each component in a project. So this could be from uh, the comments of the, the developers, but also uh, from uh, automatic analysis of the code. So this PKM that you have mentioned, is this a tangible outcome from Decoder? Yes, it is. It's a central knowledge base uh, uh, that has been designed based on the Mongo database. We have also developed a set of models and tools that uh, are made available through the PKM. And on the front-end side, the Decoder Orchestrator is a web client that provides the unified view of the software to all stakeholders. And everything you're doing is open source, right? Correct. And for those of you who aren't aware, open source software is software with source code that anyone can inspect, modify, or enhance. Exactly. Why is it so important for Decoder to be developed in this way? Sure. As you know, when public money is invested, public code is a natural choice. And uh, Decoder is a project that received funding from the European Union uh, program H2020. So the full source code, full source code being made available, open source research projects, uh, simplifies the use and the co-development of software with uh, several new partners and with external contributors now and uh, as well as in the future. So starting uh, next year, early next year, the, the platform, the Decoder platform, its methodology and tools will be in a W2 open source project, freely available to all. So anyone could contribute. Decoder designer are not only open source advocates, they want to provide a software project intelligence platform to increase the productivity and the quality of all software contributors. Some listeners might be asking about the security of open source products. How do you address this concern? At OW2, we are very concerned by this question, in fact, and we help also companies embrace open source software and have a governance uh, around open source. So, for instance, this is a challenge uh, at OW2 we, we often have. We have the market readiness levels, which is which is a business-oriented approach to open source projects, which is unique to OW2. And we want, um, by this um, MRL, uh, is the adoption of OW2 software by mainstream decision makers, those that, not, that are not necessarily familiar with the open source. We also have an initiative, which is called Open Source Good Governance Initiative. It is, a, if you want, a blueprint for the implementation of OSPO, OSPO being open source program offices uh, that is available in uh, any kind of organization. It provides a comprehensive approach for professionally managing relations with the, with the world of open source software. So with the proper governance, open source can be quite a secure option for development. Uh, yes, it is the goal. In fact, we, as uh, in the company, you had uh, CSOs, chief security officer. We think that we will uh, see more and more people involved in the good governance of open source software. When we first talked about outcomes, you mentioned a beta testing campaign. What is the status there? Three beta testing campaigns have been planned for the project so far. Two of them are currently live campaigns. You can find them, by the way, on the software menu of the Decoder website. Which I will add is decoder-project.eu. Exactly. The first tool is GML Gen. GML Gen is a utility available through the Richard platform so that beta testers can try it in their own environment. What is doing uh, GML? It generates GML annotations from what can be guessed out of a, a Java project. And the result is a GML annotated project 
that can be processed by other GML tools like the OpenGML program verification tool. Another tool is doc to json uh, It's a utility also that is available through ReachOut. This time, the beta tester can extract text or data from any uh, OpenOffice uh, documents to a JSON format. And the third beta testing campaign, what is doing, it's providing the beta release of the decoder platform, possibly as a Docker image. So decoder is not just academic then? Sure, sure, sure. It's a RIA, so research and innovation action, in fact. The uh, Horizon 2020 program uh, is really uh, uh, looking at concrete outcomes from these projects that could be reused in other projects. And the way you describe it, one could easily see the benefit on the software development community, but what about the average citizen in the EU? How will they benefit? And there will be probably several benefits, but not direct benefits to the average European citizen. It will be through the software he is using. So uh, the current trends in uh, software engineering is to provide uh, quick, fast uh, updates to any platform, any software. So Decoder here will, will play a central role to help um, contributors to understand the, more exactly what the whole platform or the whole software could be an IoT software, for instance, Internet of, of Things. Um, solution or a cloud solution or a big data solution. So this implies a lot of different uh, components and middleware and, and database. So it's difficult to have, a, for a developer in such a program, it's difficult to have a complete view and a general understanding of what the software is actually doing. So the developer will help and uh, will help contributing in uh, knowledge uh, sharing. So a benefit could be faster software development and rapid rollouts of apps, for example. Yes, it could be that, but it's, it's um, also focused on software quality and software security. If we know what we are doing when, you, when we change something in a, in a software component, it's, um, it's easier to control the way it will provide uh, the, the exact features it should provide and uh, with the security uh, level that uh, the users are expecting. So the bottom line is Decoder is poised to bring efficient, safe, and secure solutions to the software development world. That's correct. And this affects all of us. Thank you, Olivier, for joining us today and giving us a glimpse inside Decoder. Thank you very much for listening and, and asking your questions. This podcast has been brought to you by Technicon. For more information about Decoder, go to decoder-project.eu. The Decoder Project has received funding from the European Union's Horizon 2020 Research and Innovation Programme under grant agreement number 824231.